I hope you can hear me and see me as well. Let's start with the subject. We are already late. So please pardon if I keep on taking my specs off and uh, putting them again. Uh, because I know that there is a glare on my spectacles which you can see. So I will be taking it off as soon as I see the slide. We are going to generally take an overview of the subject new media which is there for your semester 3 in MACJ. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the first the first part is going to be about the six parameters of what new media is about and then I'm going to deal with the specific research papers that you have been reading and dealing with in the classroom. So let's begin. When you look at uh, new media, the six main characteristics of new media are digital, interactive, hypertextual, virtual, network and simulated. Now, I know most of you know these terms, but we'll just deal with them quickly as we don't have much time. When you talk of digital, you generally speak about uh, the things that are going on on your screen, the computer screen or maybe a mobile screen. But that's not the only thing that is dig digital in nature. So if you look at uh, the medical equipments that you use, the CNC machines that, that uh, are used for manufacturing several things, all these things are essentially digital in nature. What we are doing today, because we are media students, we are going to talk about how media texts are dematerialized. So, we used to have newspapers which were on a particular material, a paper. We used to have films which used to be on cellulite. We have got gramophones which used to be on a black disc and all that stuff. We are taking that from, that the content from those materials, dematerializing those things and putting them on a digital platform in a different format. So what does digital mean? Digital means converting all that content into numbers and those numbers are just 0 and 1. I suppose you know that when you type a lowercase a into your uh, computer screen, the real uh, language machine language converts it into 1010 and if it is capital A it is 1011 that's how everything that you see or type or read on the screen is in that particular language now what is what is that funny thing about that language so why is it so important for us mainly because this digital data can be converted into one from one format to another format from a fixed uh, format say cellulite just imagine what you can do if you shoot a film on a HD camera for example even if it is on a tape you can take a image out of that tape you can take some sound out of it and play it as a sound clip you can convert it from a wave file to an mp3 file to any other format that you want you can pick up a single uh, clip of that and convert it into an mp4 format upload it on YouTube or directly email it you can take a very heavy duty uh, uh, sound file and convert it into an mp3 which will be about one tenth of the original file and send it across. This is what digital allows you to do. So from a very fixed format which used to be uh, you know cumbersome to carry, we are now into a digital format which can be easily transported across the web. So this transition is what has made the whole thing very very important and very very uh, modern let's say. Let's go to the next slide. Why is it not changing? So the next thing is interactivity. Obviously, everything that we use today and the, the new media, one of the main important features of new media is interactivity. If you have read O'Reilly and uh, uh, Oriel is a name by the way, O-R-I-E-L-L-Y. He is the one who defined new media and he defined web 2.0. We are into web 3.0. Now what is the difference between the older web and the newer web? The main difference is the interactive nature of this new media. So where the old media, if you remember, uh, I mean, for example, television, if you look at television, you can see that on a television, you can see, watch, hear, but you cannot interact. Mm -hmm. Even on uh, 
on a, in a newspaper, the maximum what happens is you send some letters to the editor and some of them are printed. But today, online, you can directly interact with the producer. So if you see a good video on YouTube, you can send a message to the producer of that video and expect also that the producer will uh, talk back to you or uh, send a message back to you. That is what is meant and that is what makes this medium so exciting for us. What has happened during the years is that we have become users rather than readers of viewers, isn't it? So now, what is the what what happens when this kind of content is generated? Uh, very importantly, we become producers of media. Common man becomes producers of media rather than users of consumers of media. We have been talking about this in the classrooms. How user generated content is more important. So we are talking of crowdsourcing. We are talking of user generated content now. You know that YouTube is huge, but what will be YouTube if you and me don't upload videos on YouTube? What will be Facebook if we don't use it for communication with our, with our friends and peers? So the whole thing, the whole new media business and the whole new media phenomenon survives mainly on crowdsourcing and you and me are a part of that crowd. So that is very important. Next one is hypertextual. So, uh, I hope you can see and hear. Can somebody send me a message or something? So, we can confirm this. Can you type on the on the chat window? Where is the chat? Is it the chat window? Okay, I'm continuing regardless. I'm going to continue my uh, lecture. What do I click? Chat again? Right. So we are going to talk about hypertextuality now. What we talk about hyper is just like you know, if you remember, communist is a word derived, uh, communication is derived from a word, Greek word called communist. Similarly, hyper is derived from the Greek word hyper. Hyper is a prefix which derived from hyper. It is above, beyond or outside. Now, what are we going, why is this so important for us? Uh, especially media students. Now, in one uh, respect, if you look at media, we are talking of the uh, research that you do and the uh, citations that you have to give. What are citations after all? Citations are links or references to a text which is outside your original text, isn't it? You are saying that I have got this particular reference from this particular research paper or a book. That is hypertextual. So we are talking about a text which is not within this text, but which is outside this text. Similarly, say you are reading some news story on uh, India Times or Rediv.com or any other news site. You can see that within the news story, you get links to a previous story. And within that story, you again get a link to another previous story. So you can go deeper and deeper into the story. These are also hyper links and this is hyper textuality. So even in YouTube videos, you can see while the YouTube is on, you can suddenly see a link coming on the video. They are also hyper links and hyper texts. So even if you treat video as text, you are talking of a text which is outside that particular text you are reading and watching. And this is now easily what has happened is that the hypertext has become very, very easy to access. Previously, it wasn't like that. So if you had an older book that you are reading and if you, if you get a reference and you find out that the book is somewhere in Delhi or somewhere outside India, imagine the, the difficulty of getting that book. Whereas today, most of the papers that you get a link on, you can find them online. That is why new media and hypertextuality is a very important parameter you would consider. Uh, I'm not going to explore this because we are going to fall short of time. The next one is networked. Now imagine networking, without net networking you and me wouldn't be talking. Very simple. When you've got a mobile phone in your hand and you're uh, talking to someone and you, uh, you don't see the, you know, uh, you don't get a proper 
network mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying you see network so everything it depends on networking so mm -hmm. it all started when two computers were joined together and then the third one was joined and the fourth one was joined and you had a small local area network which got expanded to a wider area network again got expanded to an international network of computers and the towers that we see the mobile towers are our network which is why you and me can interact in this manner so without networking well i guess our lives will be useless now isn't it because without that we can't survive next one is of course virtual now if you look at this slide and you could see the quote that that is almost in the last pages of harry potter last book uh, uh the hallows wala book you can see that uh, the quote is of course it is happening inside your head harry but why on earth should that mean it is not real we are talking of virtual reality here we are talking of games we are talking of those gadgets that you put on your head and play a virtual game and uh, that is what so uh, if you look at this now what is very important about virtual reality for example you enter a game your when you wear that gadget on your head the head uh, gadget and the game starts you are within that environment of the game you can interact with the characters you can uh, shoot a gun and kill a character you can get shot yourself and everything seems real now what we are talking about virtual reality it's a little complex term it's not a simple term you know that it is virtual meaning possibly it is not real so but what about you being inside the game is it at that moment uh, the game real so whether it is real or not is a question so why are we talking about this is because we are leading our lives online today we are talking of facebook and suppose i don't i don't you know call somebody a friend that friend would probably come and uh, ask me tomorrow are you my friend because you are not befriended me on facebook same thing about boyfriends and girlfriends so uh, you have to be careful remember that road, uh, game called road rash well remember how involved we get in that game it is all about driving or riding a bike but unless you kick that policeman on the third uh, third uh, stage you are not able to go to the fourth stage and uh, the, what will prevent you from really kicking a policeman uh, after you are just driving a bike immediately after you know playing road rash uh, well instances have happened where people start behaving as if they are in a game and do silly things which is why it is slightly dangerous uh, next one is simulated now uh, what is imitation and what is simulation slightly difficult to really distinguish them but uh, when you talk of simulation i could give an example of the cockpit that is designed for training pilots you don't uh, so when you when you are uh, you know learning a bike you probably tell your friend take right day day or karke you go and drive the bike but you cannot possibly say that to a pilot saying that please let me fly fly a plane a flight day day so if for training pilots you need a this a cockpit which is designed like a airplane cockpit and it acts like an airplane cockpit so that you can actually work on the controls and understand how to fly a plane and only then they are taken on uh, on air similarly if you go to malls and if you go to those third and fourth floors where there are so many games you can see that the bike uh, if you have played on that or even that bike on on the malls that is also simulated so we are talking of simulated and imitation now the distinguishing characters between the two are slightly uh, you know not very clear but that is what i am talking about uh, well that is all i can say about it at this moment Now let us go to those seventy odd research papers that you might probably probably be having from your professors who are uh, conducting the course. I have sent all the PowerPoint presentations and all the research papers which I have used for this course, and uh, they have been divided into several sections. So first one is visions, history, and media uh, mediation. Here we are talking of Marshall McLuhan, who was like was uh, quite prophetic about how he he talked about things. automation learning and living and man, uh, you know media as extensions of man these are the kind of things that you need to understand and learn we need to understand that we are talking of the uh, global village phenomenon we are talking of 
media as uh, extensions of man uh, we are talking of medium as the massage these are the things that you need to understand when you talk of new media then we are talking of uh, people like jo bordela uh, you know of course he was controversial but we are talking of ecstasy of communication where he is talking of how we are using media almost vulgarly we are making the use of media into an obscene gesture we are talking of how we keep on exposing ourselves continuously online so why do i have to keep on talking about whether i am in love or in relationship or not why do i have to keep on talking about what i am eating today or if i go and have some uh, good pizza mm-hmm. why should i show that pizza online all the time the point is there is nothing wrong the point the, the issue is that we keep on doing it too much and what is obscenity ultimately it is exposure it is over exposing yourself to the world mm-hmm. what we are doing successfully today is over exposing our minds and our sight to the whole world to see and we are kind of you know hoping that we'll get so many likes for that particular post that we put on facebook that is what according to job arila it is dangerous uh, debor talks about uh, how we are losing the touch with the original we are we think that what we see online is the real one i i have read a story long time back in readers digest where a couple is uh, you know visiting niagara falls and a car comes to a screeching halt a family gets out starts you know wandering out everywhere running around trying to shoot everything that can they, you know on their cameras everybody has got a camera and they suddenly come back and sit in the car this guy asks ask the family why don't you enjoy niagara i mean you have come to niagara falls why don't you just stand here and enjoy it uh, the man the family replies oh we'll watch it on tv when we go home now is that real i mean what do you call real so we are losing touch with the real spectacle and we are we are thinking what we see online is the real thing these are the kind of theories that dipor uh, mm-hmm. talks about Uh, we have got under determination by mark poster which talks about how internet can be under determined it is not enough to define new media we are we have been trying to say that everything that we do on internet is the real thing but does it really really define everything that we do or is there something offline also these are the kind of questions cultural homogenization or uh, archaeology of media by arki hutamo we are talking of how uh, the new media is you know a remediation of the older media so for example when uh, a camera was invented how was it uh, uh, in, i mean why was that that plate square or rectangular in shape because you could insert that tape into the camera easily you could possibly insert a round tape inside the camera uh, uh, that that uh, uh, round board which have which was coated with uh, all those chemicals which could capture the light now we have kept on using the same logic right up to now we still have screens which are rectangular in shape why don't we have round shape screen can you imagine if you look at the vision that you are having today it is round it is round it is not square you can see it in brown we have been remediating the older media and developing new newer media so that is what archaeology of uh, media talks about let's go next to next we are talking about mediation uh, so we are talking of mediated interpersonal communication if you remember your communication theory we are talking of something called rich media and we are talking of face to face being the richest form of medium and communication we have graduated from face to face communication rich medium to of telephone and then of course the television and then we have come to internet and facebook and slowly progressively we have destroyed mm-hmm. the original form of communication that is face to face that is what we are talking about mediated communication the only difference today as we are talking today is that we are back to face to face communication as i'm as what is happening right now you can see me you can hear me and if i make an expression then you will be able to see my expression also which is not possible on the phone so we uh, somehow somewhere while developing the new media we have we have realized that that impersonal mediated communication may not work in the long run we need to come back to our roots we need to come back to 
face to face communication and mediated interpersonal communication has now reached the stage where we can actually communicate it uh, communicate face to face but then you should read robert cathcart and gary uh, gumpert for more about interpersonal communication because there is mediated interpersonal communication then there is uh, uh, computer based interpersonal communication all those things there are four parameters that you need to read for your examination uh, when you are talking of cultural approach to communication when new media and media in general deals with culture in a very funny manner the culture that you see in new media is only when uh, it is not prime time it's not prime time the culture is not prime time ever so all, all those cultural programs that you see are usually late at night when nobody is online what has changed in new media the change that you got in new media is at least if you want to you can access just one second if you want to you can always access information that may not be prime time information so if you are interested in some odd subject you can always go online and find it uh, we have got immediacy hypermediacy and premediation this is actually a rehash of what we have been talking about in the previous uh, slides premediation hypermediacy is basically hypermedia and hypertextuality and immediacy is how we can we can uh, you know get in touch with somebody else within uh, with a blink of the eye okay raymond williams has written a beautiful uh, piece if, if you have got all those papers which are sent uh, technology and society now what raymond williams has been talking about is is technology a cause or is it an effect let us consider internet for example when we talk of new media we generally talk of internet and mobile why did internet possibly get so popular a lot of researchers are saying that internet became popular because of the need to communicate why because the traditional media which was supposed to you know kind of help people organize thoughts help people communicate with each other help people communicate with the government and the politics and generally be uh, you know helpful for us turned out to be commercial in nature and we have only one way communication coming through the older forms of media when the internet was in, uh, invented when internet started getting developed in 1960 uh, though it was developed basically for military purposes it quickly caught on and when 1995 internet was commercialized um, even we got internet in 1995 by the way uh, in july we got internet in august 1995 we got mobile phones though they didn't did become very popular but the reason why it became really popular is because it allowed interpersonal interaction so uh, where i had to make a call and uh, talk to you i could uh, and it used to cost a lot story and study as the internet became cheaper it became more and more popular and the reason why it became popular because it allowed interactivity it, it, it allowed interactivity between between friends between people with common likes and dislikes and uh, it broke down all the physical boundaries of uh, states cities and country which is why uh, i we say that uh, it is a cause or it, that, that that is a question that you have to answer in your answer books i am not going to answer all the questions so is it a cause or an effect is something that you have to think about do artifacts of politics they do because uh, Uh, if you read, read that paper by Langdon Winner, you you realize how he has shaped it up. So he has given a very beautiful example of how New York uh, war bridges were built in such a way that the blacks couldn't enter the city because they couldn't travel by cars and the buses couldn't pass under the war bridges. So these kind of things is written. Very interesting paper. Please read it. Ethnography of infra infrastructure. There's a very interesting example that susan star has given in the paper she has talked about how a telephone directory could you know actually help in ethnographic study how can you help how can a, a telephone directory be ethnographic in nature just imagine you are just trying to find out all the current records that are there on the uh, in the directory mm. or you try to find out a particular name if you if you try doing that you will see that you are actually not talking of technology 
but you are talking of people who are represented in the technology so that is why technology also has uh, ethnography just read that paper it's very interesting affordances uh, technology and affordances now what is affordances basically affordances is being allowed to or getting the capability of doing something so for example uh, if i don't have money i can't buy something i should be able to afford to buy a particular thing what has happened in the past few years especially the last 10 years is technology especially communication technology and media technology has developed so much that we can afford the technology gives us affordability to do a lot of things that previously were not possible so when i was in college for example i i didn't did not even dream about producing a movie whereas now anybody with a smartphone can actually shoot a high definition movie also edit it on that smartphone and actually come out with a fantastic movie which can be an award winner and upload it on youtube for the whole world to see that is how affordances work so we are talking of affordances that are given by new media technology uh, though this paper is not in your in that bank of papers that i have given you uh, for new media technopoly is something that you need to read need post and you can read it online we are talking of how human beings are becoming increasingly dependent on technology for everything that they do and according to neil postman it is uh, slightly disastrous in nature why so for example another joke in some magazine or somewhere that uh, there is a difference between the older generation and the newer generation especially dhande wale logo so the older generation used to you know uh, calculate suppose there is a hisab uh, you know calculation for some items they will calculate on the calculator and then they check physically today's generation will don't do want you bother you know calculating by their using their brains that are directly use the calculator are we losing it is the question that we have to ask are we losing the ability to uh, do things Uh, really well are we lo- losing even the ability to add subtract multiply because we probably won't be remembering our tables and neither the figures or ability to actually calculate things that is the kind of uh, thing neil postman of course he talks about lot of other things too but you need to read neil postman as a part of your new media syllabus even though it is not in the list of papers that are given to you communication technologies in transition okay now this is an interesting uh, paper by jeffrey number is talking of farewell to information age he is talking he is saying that enough of information uh, we have got enough information we have we have a deluge of information online we need to now talk about communication more than information what do we inform people about we inform them about everything possible how much do we communicate is the real question that is the crux of the paper by jeffrey number uh well uh, colin cherry has written about uh, telephone system and it is a very important invention we look at the history of development of new media the most important probably uh, invention probably is the invention of the transistor the transistor meaning that small circuit that was made and then integrated into an integrated circuit ic that is what the hardware part of new media is that is what led to this huge electronic media revolution and one of the uh, you know offshoots one of the products of that was the telephone remember telephone is the one apart from telegraph of course telephone is the one which actually started personal communication network telegraph was always a very technical kind of thing you know uh, on a telegraph you had to write by morse code you had to you type uh you know in in short because it was expensive it came out as a ticker at the other end and it was never never ever a personal piece of equipment nobody owned a telegraph machine at home but once the telephone started becoming popular you developed telephone network so the beginning of network network in as a new media was with telephones nothing else so telephone networks happened first remember that because of telephone networks you could think of computer networks because of these networks you could think of uh, you know networking your computers and networking your mobile phones we are still talking mm. of mobile as phones and not cameras right uh, 
Gaitai in Japan is a very interesting phenomenon. In in Japan, I I guess about eighty uh, percent of people own mobile phones and they use mobile extensively. In fact, four G was first launched in Japan, uh, that you know, in that the rest of the world, and it's a very personal phenomenon in Japan. They use it like uh, the uh, a part of their body. Uh, it's a very interesting phenomenon. Please read read that paper. It's very interesting. Don't miss it out. Uh, then we are going slightly into repetitive mode here. Computers have, as communication devices. Uh, so from telephones, we went to. I am talking of technology. We went from telephones to films and television. But those uh, devices and those media did not allow us to communicate. They only afforded one-way communication. But when computers came in and they networked with each other, we have got intranets and then of course the internet. they became our real communication devices of course mobile phones came later but uh, the telephone was always fixed to a, a particular place uh, even the computer was fixed to a particular place for uh, so for a country like india mobile became a very 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 important device of communication um when the shaping of the web uh, political uh, politics of search engines if you have been reading newspapers i hope you have been reading those papers you are all media students and communication journalism students you can see uh, about a weeks back there was an article in the newspaper how google is manipulating the search results to suit commercial interests so if i have money i have enough money and i want to promote a particular cause or institute a political party an organization i can always pay money to google and ensure that the first results that come in the google search Are the ones which I want. When I search, but you know, search using particular keywords, the results will that will be generated will be as per the money I pay to Google. And you read those articles, you know what I am talking about. So politics of search engines is taking a uh, very important shape today. Uh, we are talking of development. of interactive games because why why development of interactive games because interactive games have not only become a game game uh, thing but they have also become an important phenomenon of connecting and communicating with each other so we have got interactive games where you can see people forming groups and communities online and actually training uh, offline when they when they meet and it's become a very important phenomenon today there are people who are uh, you know teaching uh, children how about history geography english or whatever uh, subjects through interactive games they are becoming a very important part of education too which is why interactive games are now an important part of new media you need to look into that uh, i am not going to talk about popularizing the internet because i already spoken about it and we have already spoken about the uh, computer mediated communication and social aspect but social aspects i would like to again talk about let's go back to job board leader and guide the board and mark post and people like that we have been uh, talking about how new media has been affecting uh, our lives if you remember your second semester you had basic research and uh, you had a book by glenn g sparks and if you remember those examples that have been given that book you will see the effect new media is having on the lives of people so if you remember there is a uh, there is a strip online called cartoon strip online if you search for it there there is a father and son chatting on the on online on the computers and they are asking each other hi dad how are you and the dad says i'm fine son how are you are your studies going online uh, i mean all right and after some time the dad types in the chat saying that son will you please come down for dinner we are all hungry here so within the house they are actually chatting with each other on mobile phones and you can see so many cartoons uh, uh, online where friends are sitting beside each other and actually you know sharing images and text and jokes and they could have easily talked about it we have we need to understand this phenomenon and find out how to find a way out of this are we are we in a real world or are we living in a virtual world if i am not friends with you on facebook am i not a friend at all these are the kind of sociological aspects that people are talking about on the about the new media 
this is a very important topic when you are talking of internet as a public sphere if you are uh, if you have read jurgen habermas and if you have read about public sphere we know that what we are talking about when we talk about public sphere we are talking about a group a, 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 a community where everybody are equal nobody is uh, the authority uh, from which any any person comes is not recognized in that place you can argue you can criticize you can debate and come out with a solution without the fear of any repercussions so if i am talking to a minister or i am talking to a, a a janitor or i am talking to anybody everybody is equal in a public sphere you know those examples from coffee houses you know those examples which jogan habermas has been talking about now why am i talking about it here in this lecture because the reason is that everybody thought that once the internet becomes popular because it allows two way interaction because it allows mass interaction because it allows several people to talk about what they think it will become the ideal public sphere the point is we are not yet sure if you read and search internet as the public sphere online you will see hundreds of research papers which talk either for or against there are a lot of pessimistic views they are very, very optimistic so uh, say for example uh, authors like pepa norris or uh, i think uh, josen uh, not josen so it is another they talk very negatively about this aspect they say that even though we did think that internet will become a ideal public sphere uh, it is not proving to be so when you are talking of public sphere you are also talking of new media and the community how the community could Uh, you know, generate a positive attitude towards uh, society. We are talking of public uh, uh, of new media and participation. We all thought everybody in the research field and new media field thought that because interactivity is possible, because you are able to say what you want, we will be able to have more public participation in the democratic process of the country. So, uh, the example which I give normally in the classroom is how. during anna azari's andolan in 2011 there were so many people in jantar mantar and then after the delhi andolan he came to azad maidan and more than 20000 people had said online on facebook on interactive media that they will be participating in the andolan in the dharna in azad maidan and not even 200 people turned up so uh, does internet lead to public participation in the democratic process of the country is a big big question mark that is what you need to think about when you are talking of democratization of communication these are the aspects now when we are talking of i think we are at the end of our slides let me check what you, i have next yeah now let us let us just uh, you know kind of revise the whole thing why what is it that you need to look out uh, for when you are talking of new media what is it that is important in your answers in the exam mm-hmm. ultimately we are looking at that is it you need to think about several things one is how technology is affecting society so right from job ordinar and uh, need postman and mark poster you need to you take that as one group then you have to talk of commercial in you can take up, i have forgotten that in the slide i just remembered arjun appadurai and is talking of heterogeneous and homogeneous societies and is talking of ethnoscapes and media scapes and idea scapes how how because of technology uh, there is faster technology transfer there is western india union tra- uh, you know money transfer so you can transfer money from one country to another then you have got ideas scape where ideas can be sent across the web you have got media scape where you can uh, you know watch movies online and it doesn't depend on which country you are uh, watching the movie from so for example one of those films i think harry potter films or avenger films got released in india of course because we are in the east and us in the west so uh, i actually speaking those films got released in india first so media scapes idea scapes techno scapes finance scapes he is talking of that so now apart from the sociological point of view we are talking of a commercial point of view so the commercialization of new media is one part which you can take then we have got theories about how media acts as a communication device how media and communication new media i'm talking about of course new media and communication are tied to each other and how as humans we are uh, dealing with this new media uh, one last point which i would like to make 
which I have written on my blog if you have been following it, is man has been around this this particular species of man, Homo sapiens, has been around for about a million years, uh, hundred thousand years. Say. Out of this hundred thousand years, language has developed about forty thousand years back. Writing has probably developed about three thousand years back. So we are talking of uh, cuneiform tablets uh, and those kind of writings, carvings on stone, and then print what about 800 years back and then uh, 1920s we got television 1920s we got uh, films and 1940s we got uh, uh, television in india we got television in late 1970s and 80s and then internet came hardly 20 years back the point is that as human beings i don't think and of course i don't think meaning marshall mcluhan doesn't think that uh, we have been able to deal with this phenomenon in terms of evolution. So, if you are talking of 100,000 years, man has been able to deal with uh, phenomena in nature, phenomenon as, uh, you know, been able to adjust the living with the animals and fellow human beings and the nature and everything, weather. But the media revolution and evolution has been so fast, especially new media evolution has been so fast that I think we are not able to deal with how this particular phenomenon, which is why we are acting crazy. We are going on Facebook all the time. We are behaving funny. We don't know how to deal with this phenomenon. But uh, despite all the sociological uh, negativity that is floating around, despite uh, the fact that uh, internet has not really, really become a public sphere, I think we should take a positive view. I think we will be able to, as humans, uh, we are survivors. And I think we'll be able to survive this particular phenomenon and use it for the benefit of my kind. That is where I would like to end my lecture. So, uh, folks, I hope you have enjoyed this. I know it's a short lecture, but I am open for question answers now. You can either uh, use your mic and chat, talk to me, or you can send some chat in the chat window. Any questions, folks? I am here online for some more time. You can use the chat window also. Okay, I've got a request here from Bhagyashri from Joshi Bedekar College. Bhagyashri, how many are, uh, of you are attending this? Can you just tell me, please, on the chat? Can you hear me, Bhagyashri? This is all, all uh, going for everybody, this question. I, I, how can I chat with only Bhageshri? Okay, it's okay. Bhageshri, I'll answer your question. Why is this? Wait, wait, I will. 
Bitte? Okay, it's okay. I can write it. Okay, I'll answer uh, one by one. I hope you can still hear me. But, uh, okay. Now, Bhageshri, uh, we don't have real notes, notes for this subject. If you talk to your uh, professor, uh, if you talk to uh, Professor Murdeshwar, he will have probably about 70 research papers that, that I have been uh, sending over mail. You need to read those research papers. We don't have notes as in, uh, you know, these kind of, not the lecture notes. What I can also do is I can share a folder which is on my Dropbox and you can use that folder. I've got some of my lectures which are uh, recorded, audio lectures. You can uh, listen to those lectures uh, if you want. They are in more detail. They are about specific topics in those slides. So you've got Job Audrila, you've got Mark Poster, you've, you've got Neil Postman. All those I have been dealt with individually in those, those audio lectures. I will send you a link. I will send a link to Dr. Murdeshwar. Uh, okay, uh, Sagar, how is the idea? I have got a question from Sagar Karande. He asks me, how is the idea of new media changed in the last 3-4 years from the time the idea of new media was initiated? Well, Sagar, an interesting question. I will give you an, an example. Uh, when I started teaching the Department of Communication Journalism in 2003 and 2004, uh, uh, that is a, about the time when Facebook came into picture. And at that time, we had something called Orkut. I hope uh, many of you know Orkut. So, we thought that Facebook will be another Orkut. You know, it will be another fad. So, just like Orkut, you know, was uh, taken off about uh, one, one year back. Similarly, Facebook will, you know, slowly fade away and there will be some mm -hmm. other thing. But I think what has happened during these years is not only internet has become popular, the computers have become slightly cheaper, but we have this phenomenon of mobile phones coming in. So, Karno Dunya Mutti Me by Reliance, uh, you know, uh, started that big revolution where uh, you got a mobile phone for 500 rupees and everybody could suddenly, even your local chaiwala and the uh, sabjiwala could afford uh, to buy a mobile phone and communicate using that mobile phone. That actually kick-started a major, major revolution in the way we, we communicate. And uh, the uh, even I used to say that Facebook is or chale or there will be something else. But no, because of cheaper internet, because of cheaper computers, and then advent of mobile phones and the facility that mobile phones provided for, uh, you know, going online, that changed the whole equation and we have to rethink about how we used to think about new media. It is not just mobile phones or not just computers. It is a combination of computers, mobile phones and the facility of internet which has to be seen together to understand new media, not individual. I hope that under, uh, answers your question, Sagar. Uh, there is another question by Namrata Prabhu. Uh, sir, there is always a gap between new media in India and abroad. How, according to you, can this gap be covered? Well, Namrata, there is bound to be this gap. So, one major gap, if you if you talk about gaps, Finland is the country where uh, having an internet connection is by law a right. Uh, so, if you don't have a connection, you can sue the government of Finland. Uh, it is by right that you have to have internet connectivity and we are facing a, a problem of even today we have to start half an hour late because of the uh, connectivity problems. Now, the point is that I would say that don't compare. Don't compare what you have abroad and don't compare what you have in India. It would be actually foolish to do so. So, for example, if you know one of our past students called Suchitra Varma, uh, we were chatting online uh, once about 3-4 years back when she wanted to uh, create a website. And she said, sir, will you please download my video and see what we can do about the video. I said, fine, send me the link. She sent me a link and I started download. And then within half a minute she called, uh, you know, on the Facebook she chatted. So you got a video? I said, Suchitra, I'm, I'm in India. Uh, and even 5% of the movie is not downloaded. So let us talk after one hour. 
So it took about an hour to download a small piece of video. So I think we should not really, really compare at the moment because we are not at par. What we should see is that we keep on pushing for better internet connectivity. If you do that, that will be better. What do you want to do? All right, let me go to the next question. I'll go to the next question. Uh, is new media threat to traditional forms of comments? No, sorry, there is another one. Please mention the hyperrealism and exploitation on it by media. I don't think uh, there is anything called hyperrealism because according to me, everything is real and uh, hyper. What we are doing actually is the same old phenomenon of signalism that happens in the new media, which we are overdoing it on uh, in, in the traditional media, which we are overdoing it on the new media. I think it is not about hyperrealism or hyper. It is just that we are talking about uh, uh, when you are talking of hyperrealism, I hope we are talking about on the same wavelength. We are talking of the facility to exploit and to explore text and explore explore content which is not a part of the present content that you are seeing. That is what we are talking about it. And exploitation of media, yes, I agree with you. Even the new media, uh, so for example, once upon a time, Facebook was the domain of youngsters. Now old people like me are also on Facebook and then you don't have the, any privacy left. So uh, we are exploiting the media to its fullest. It's not just about people like me, but commerce has also taken over Facebook. Remember, every time you go to Facebook, you are going to see the exploited space means the advertisements. And if we are not going to end, end that, I don't know who will. We'll have to look at it. I hope that answers your question, uh, Jerry. Let me go to the next question. Is new media threat to traditional forms of communication? especially newspapers when it comes to news reporting. Uh, it's really slightly difficult, but I tell you one thing, that no medium has actually been responsible to kill another medium till date. Except, of course, the today we can see a phenomenon where the uh, newspapers across the world are getting ghost on. But I think if you look at the India-specific problem, I don't think it's going to be so soon. There's going to be a lot of time when newspapers are going to be very much hale and hearty, mainly because we are dealing with a phenomenon called languages. Even now, if, though we don't have a 70 population of rural and uh, urban population, we still have a huge population which is staying in India. And that population is first learning in their written language and the cheapest form of media that gets read is the newspaper. So we are not going to face a closure of newspapers so soon in the go to another question first and we have got a question from Hatipa. Is new media threat to or we have already answered that question. Anybody else? Correct. Hmm? Hi Sagar. Sagar I can hear you. I guess it could be some entertaining groups nights right. Hello Sagar. Nice again, just give you some Necessary change. Yeah, any, qu any more questions from anyone? Sorry. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no questions. No. Okay, we are getting another question from Namrata Prabhu. We are often complaining to media. Nothing, not really. Fragmenting the society and isolating individuals. Uh, well, Namrata, uh, you want to add anything to that? Is that a question? You want me to comment on the statement? Okay. Uh, I don't know whether we should really talk about fragmenting the society because, uh, in fact, it joins society, isn't it? 
what we are looking at uh, the phenomenon that we are looking at on the on the new media especially is actually retribalization instead of instead of fragmentation yes uh, the uh, the media as such in general is fragmented because of the communities and languages but we need to also understand that the same new media is helping to you know get people of you know like minded people coming together so if i am i am somebody who likes a certain thing so you know i do play modeling i have i i know groups that you know can discuss play modeling or if you do something else so a tracker can come across groups which talk about tracking i can be uh, you know passionate about a particular subject we are actually uh, you know in a phenomenon of retribalization rather than fragmentation we are looking at a phenomenon where a lot of people can come together of course like the last slide in my presentation whether it actually leads to a democratic process whether it actually leads to action offline in real life is the real question mark we really don't know how it's going to come out right anybody anybody else uh, wants to ask me something they are welcome yes i am the owner of the salvin wagon department of university sir more questions yes sir Okay, there is one more question, sir. It's not about the bar back in time. So, how do you think the position of people who are independent, people who are independent on new media? Uh, well, yeah, you are right when you say that it's not possible to walk back in time. And uh, I don't think we should change the perspective of people who are dependent, uh, depending on new media. I think we should we should actually change the way. we have content on new media remember uh, in when you are talking of new media we are talking of people who are producers and people who are consumers on new media we are all consumers and we are all producers of content what we should really look at is how we can control and possibly create better content on new media so dependency of new media is not a new phenomenon it is an old phenomenon we all depend on media for uh, everything to do with the, our lives whether it is new media or older media like newspapers or television what really matters is that with the traditional forms of media like television and newspaper we could not really create content there was no way we could actually address this problem of uh, what kind of content we can create so if you remember uses and gratification theory it clearly says that the onus is on the audiences and not the producers so Uh, the producers will always say that i am giving you what you want and i don't care what you need as a society but since we are the producers of content on new media don't you think we should really start creating better content rather than trying to change the perspective of audience because audiences are always going to be the same audience whether they are audiences and readers and viewers of older media or new media what is really necessary as we understand what we put up on the new media whether we are saying uh, relevant and important and useful material on the new media that is going to be the how the answer to your question number one okay namrata thank you very much so i guess uh, we are at the end of the session and we will end this session now anybody else wants to ask a question i am there so should we end the session i guess we are finished okay there is something else how is the idea of new media change the last week we can i okay jerry i have i have just seen your question and uh, also question by sachi bhatia uh, this was in another another section so uh, job or the excess of communication is a prophetic note to the ever growing hyper realism 
how will it reflect now jerry i think uh, job bodilas excess of communication is slightly negative and maybe slightly pessimistic uh, that's my personal opinion of course uh, i don't want to impose my opinion on anybody else i think we should look at the positive side of it look this is how we are going to use the media why i say this is because that is how we are uh, we have got something to talk about till now i did not have any tool to address the world i did not have a tool to show what i could do i did not have a tool to communicate i have got a tool now it's like using a you know getting a new mobile phone and spending two days on trying out the new features till you finish that exercise you are not going to be able to use the mobile phone like a mobile phone. you are going to play with it i think what is happening is because this new media phenomenon is very very new we are over using it for some time and like i said i think in in due course of time we'll understand that this is not life but we can actually use that new media to shape our life marshall mcluhan said if you remember that we shape media and in turn they shape us similarly i think we have shaped the new media and uh, at the moment those new media are shaping us but i think we will be able to reshape the content on the new media and uh, uh, you know come out better in life i think we should look at the positive job bodila mark poster a slightly uh, slightly negative side of the whole whole phenomenon we should also look at the positive side of the phenomenon don't just go by job bodila expressive communication well they have got another question how is the idea of new media changed in the last 3 4 years from the time the idea of new media was? oh that is a question which i already answered sagar's question and last one is what is the impact impact of new media on intercultural communication well uh, tulika bhattacharya is the one who has asked the question i personally think that there is a huge impact of new media on intercultural communication uh, we are we are having a phenomenon where we are seeing cross cultural communication happening uh, if we use that new media content uh, optimally and with some sense it is actually generating a phenomenon actually generating a, a, a you know uh the fact that we are able to connect different cultures with each other despite the fact that those cultures are having different ways of dealing with life we are we are looking at new media in terms of how uh, how the content can be generated and how that content can be utilized and intercultural communication is something that you need to understand that so within those two cultures what we are doing with new media is finding commonality so whether i come from a uh, one particular culture or the another new media is helping us find commonalities in those cultures and connect those cultures with each other that is what is happening to intercultural communication when you are talking of new media there will be a lot of negatives there will be a lot of uh, people who say that the new media is actually hampering intercultural communication or you know uh, creating uh, polarity between different cultures but i would rather look at the positive side of it i think the intercultural communication is much better with new media than the older media because i think the older media actually were the ones who used to polarize more than the new media all right i guess i think now this is the last question yeah so folks thank you for attending and uh, you want me to give my email id or something i'll give my email id in the chat box want to send me an email you can send me an email to my personal email id mangesh.karandikar at gmail.com you can always send me an email on this email id what's it not going one minute sending my email id and in, in case you got any questions you are free to ask them on my email 
and uh, for notes like i said you need to refer back to your coordinators and your professors who have got the whole bunch of uh, research papers that i have been referring to and uh, another thing uh, uh, they will also have a set a question bank of about 70 or 80 questions which i have sent along with those notes so you have got about 70 research papers about 10 15 books all in soft copies and a question bank of 80 questions probable questions that does not mean those are the questions that are going to uh, uh, you know come in your question in your examinations but if you study those questions you are going to cover the whole topic that much i can guarantee so thank you folks thank you very much for attending my lecture good day